But there are some couples that both wife and husband are just. <laughs> I never had my wife send me a text like tonight with the little uh, the little uh, tongue emoji. You've yeah, never. It's Dre never like, sends you a message like. No, yeah, like the little uh, splash emoji. On, yeah, hundred percent. But it's not like. 1045 every Thursday. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, but there are, there are. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Full Transparency with Donnie Wiggins, where I allow you an inside look, kind of like a bird's eye view in what we have going on behind the scenes of everything entrepreneurship. That means that I get with some of my successful friends and we're talking about their business, their lifestyle, things that they may be struggling with and things that they are doing to create massive success. And today... How is an inside look a bird's eye view? So I, I don't usually say a bird's eye view. <laughs> I didn't get that part. I usually say fly on the wall. <laughs> I was like, that was an exact contradiction. <laughs> bird's eye I don't view even know inside. where bird's eye view. I think you're making me nervous. It sounded good. I think I think the podcast Godfather <laughs> is making me nervous today. You're doing great, Daddy. Anyway, you guys, obviously I am here with a very special guest, and his name is David Shands, my partner in crime, my partner in business, my brother in success, podcast king. Yes. Entrepreneur. Uh, king, yes. king of entrepreneurship. Keep you got going. a whole lot going on. Keep going. Uh, astounding husband. More. Fantastic father. Oh, you talking good. You are an amazing father times three. Mm. You are a man of great character. Hold on. Did anybody tell you today how amazing you are? No. I actually. think you're amazing. I think that you are a culture shift shifter. I think you are a community leader. I think you are an impactful thought leader. And I want you to go out here and win today, tomorrow, the next day, and all your days to come. I believe in you. Don't nobody normally talk to me like that. I believe in you. Shan. This is going to be good, man. I, I was... believe in you, King. Thank you. I believe yes. in you, too. Thank you. Absolutely. I believe in us. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. We've done some incredible things over the Amazing. years. Absolutely. We have done some incredible things over the years. We have, um, we didn't necessarily do network marketing together, but mm -hmm. at the same time in the same companies, mm -hmm. we've been involved successfully in network marketing. Uh, we then took that really. Wasn't that successful? You don't think you were successful? Did you get a check? I got a little check. Did you get a check consistently? Uh, up and down for a little season up and down One bad. so here's the thing if you manage to get a check in network marketing no matter the amount <laughs> you have created That's some success <laughs> that is the win for sure oh. um then we took that relationship and uh just on a happenstance i think i came to your kiosk in mm. the mall the sleep is for suckers kiosk where you sold t-shirts and i bought a couple of t-shirts and um i bought maybe three or four i think i bought two for me and two for deja mm. my daughter and um, I think at that time it was a conversation. You know what I'm, I'm realizing in real time? We had a conversation in real time mm -hmm. at that time that said, yo, we should do something together. Like, you're dope. I'm dope. Yeah. Let's do an event. And we actually did it. Absolutely. 100%. We were we were different. Our hustle was different back then. I think it's intensified as of late more. More. But yeah. we went through a period for about a year yeah. where we had all these ideas and we executed none. I mean, that's kind of what you talking about before, like back then or recently, recently, like we just got back into the swing of actually talking about doing a thing yes. and doing it. Yeah. But I think um, and maybe it was the success that happened yeah. that didn't create as much urgency, because back in 2015, when we said, let's start doing these events, if we said today yeah. we're doing an event, by tomorrow we had the flyer done, 100%. the website 100%. was up, the event yeah. right link was ready to go. Um, but maybe maybe our need for executing or our hunger for executing yeah. was a little different yeah. than it was, say, last year. Because we both had less responsibilities. Much less. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I remember, think about it like you were, you were in college with your own girls, and y'all said, yo, we going out tonight. It's like, yo, we going, for sure. I don't for got sure. nothing else to do. We yeah. going. yeah. But when you get more responsibilities, um, the things you want to do and the things you have to do are different. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, sometimes we'll sit there and come up with a cool idea. And we're like, yo, we want to do this, but we still have to run our business. We still have so. to run. Yeah. So people look at us and they think, um, oh, wow, David and Donnie social proof podcast. Mm -hmm. And now recently Donnie full transparency podcast. Mm -hmm. Basically, they see us and they think 
the totality of our business model is podcasting. <laughs> like all we do is sit down in front of a camera and right. record. Uh, but there's a very different picture 100%. that's actually happening. So we have a, we have a whole lot going on. You're actually running your own independent business. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, mm -hmm. I have a business that I'm running too. And um, we had a conversation earlier this week on Social Proof Podcast okay. where um, you've been, a lot of our relationship has been you imposing your wish for me upon me. I don't know a lot of our relationship, but since we started the podcast, yes. Since we started the podcast? Yeah. For since, sure. Since we started like doing it together? Since 20, 2020. 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> so for the yeah. last couple of years. Yes. <laughs> but, okay, go where you were going with it, the question. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a question. Mm -hmm. It's that's I want to spend some time having that conversation yeah. here um, because I think it's really important for people to see that these two influential entrepreneurs in this space struggle with things. And uh, we have conversations that like you have with me, like I would have with my clients and I'm giving you excuses. And it's so crazy because in the beginning it was kind of like you used to come to me and I would give you like some advice and feedback. And now it's like, Donnie, I'm the coach. <laughs> David is like, now I'm the coach and I'm telling you what you're going to do with your life and your business mm -hmm. and all this good stuff. But on full transparency, I like for people to really see, um, you know, obviously the wins that we have, like those things are evident. I think they see that, but I want people to see kind of how we talk yeah. and, um, the conversations we will have. So I don't want you to hold back. Don't be putting, I will not. Okay. I will not hold back, but I don't want you not don't play with me now. No. <laughs> this is still your show. Be this respectful. Is, this okay. is still full transparency with Donnie Wiggins. All right. This is not social proof, mm. <laughs> but yeah, Noted. I just want us to have, I want to be clear um, for the audience, they're going to enjoy this because this isn't an interview. Absolutely. This is, we're supposed to be at lunch right now. In yes. fact, yes. let me see. I'm, I'm lightweight capping right now because I'm looking at my watch and you, don't you know, I don't wear my it. watch every day. Right. <laughs> so this mug ain't got the right date or time. I will, I will help you. With I'm like, way. I don't even know how to <laughs> set it. <laughs> I got you. Don't worry. After this, we are going to teach you. I don't you even know how to set how my to watch. Set your Rolex. <laughs> For sure. And I've had it for like two years almost or something like that now. But was that, an, was that another pressure thing, me imposing my will on you? You actually did. So <laughs> you know what? I am really thinking this out in real time. I only bought another car mm -hmm. in 2020, I think, at the end of 2020, because of your pressure. <laughs> Donnie, you don't look out. You don't look like you out here getting money in your Chevy. You ain't getting no, no money Chevy in that. Wasn't Donnie Wiggins? <laughs> it wasn't. You, you ain't getting no money in the Chevy. <laughs> so I literally go and buy a Mercedes. Mm -hmm. When I went the other day and bought that Mercedes, or a couple of weeks ago and bought that Mercedes, I'm like, David's gonna be proud. Yeah. And that David drink was gonna... Donnie Wiggins too. <laughs> because the Mercedes that I bought, y'all, still wasn't me, but. I still I was still operating in mm -hmm. fear from mm -hmm. that place. I actually didn't even go to buy that particular car for myself when I bought it at the end of 2020. I went to go buy my daughter a car for her 18th birthday. No, it was for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I went to go buy her a car. And the deciding factor for me to get one was the salesperson was like, oh, so are you trading in the Chevy? And I'm like, oh, no, that's my car. <laughs> and he's like, wait. So your daughter is going to be riding in a Benz and you're going to be still riding in, in the Chevy that I've never seen that happen. That's right. really, he was like, that's really generous of you. And I literally, you probably flashed through my mind. Like David is going to clown me. I would have. He's going to clown me if I make this decision. So I ended up buying two cars mm -hmm. and I thought I was doing something. Like I got her the entry level SUV mm -hmm. and I got me the one step above yeah. that SUV and I'm riding like I got my little Benz. <laughs> I'm doing something and I pull up to the e-complex and David was like, oh, this is nice. It's nice. It's nice. Compared to the Chevy, it was nice. It was an upgrade. It was an upgrade. For sure. Yeah, it was an upgrade. But I felt like I needed to, you know, what's crazy is I was so scared to buy those cars and the fear was because I've had two vehicles repossessed, mm. right? Trauma. Um, hmm? trauma, trauma, you got vehicle trauma. I have, I have expensive things that are unpaid off trauma. Ooh. Mm -hmm. It's not just vehicle trauma. So it was like, you know, for example, when I went and bought this watch, I had the option to put this on a credit card, yeah. but I have trauma associated with remembering 
charging things up. And when, when the recession happened way back when losing all my income and I couldn't make those credit card payments. So I don't know if you remember, but I actually went to the bank and I came back with $23,000 in the envelope. Remember we looked online and saw how much it would cost. And I came back with that amount in a zippy bag from the bank. And we went to the Rolex place and, and actually you put it on your credit card. Yes. And I gave you the money. I wanted to point. Hold on. Reese, was it? We're good? Yeah. Okay, I, I don't know. We're always good here. It's full transparency with Donnie Wiggins, baby. <laughs> Yo, my mind and content you're is on, always You're moving. in production. I went, to, uh, I, I, I went to EYL studio and I found myself like, uh, hey, that light, if you I'm like, yo, let me stop. Let yeah. Me, okay. We have a different process here. Reese signals me very differently mm -hmm. on this set. Yeah. Good. But I say that to say, um, I remember you wanted the point, so I gave you the cash. But for me, I had to pay it off and be done because yeah. I own it. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a, there's, and, and so I was traumatized even in real estate. Like, when my house that I worked so hard to buy when I was 24 years old, I bought a really big, beautiful home and then I would go later to lose it before I was 30 years old, maybe at 30 hey. years old. Right. So I lost this house and I realized like, I don't own shit. Mm. I didn't own anything. You don't own this home until you pay this freaking mortgage off. If you mm -hmm. fall upon a hard time, you can be foreclosed on as quickly as you can be evicted from an apartment. Like I got a house thinking nobody could ever take this away from me. And the first thing that they came and <laughs> took from me <laughs> What's my Goodness house? Gracious. That was the first thing to go. In fact, my cars were out for repossession and they had foreclosed on the home. I had already gone to move with my mom. The car that they were coming to get, I just parked that thing at the house and I called at the house that they had foreclosed on. Right. Like, look, y'all go pick that thing up. Oh my God. Cause it's, it's a wrap. So yes, I have trauma um, associated to things that I don't own in full, yeah. but where I was going with that. Okay. So I'm at Houston's eating, you know, one of my favorite spots and the sales manager that I've now been working with for years right. over at Mercedes, <laughs> you know, because now we have a relationship. He calls me and he is like, um, hey, you want to come and test drive this brand new Mercedes? The uh, what do you call it? The EV, EV the yeah. electric vehicle. And I'm like, sure, I don't have anything to do. So I just roll over to Mercedes and he's like. I'm, I, I get in the car and I'm like, this is like a, this is like a S550. He's mm -hmm. like, yes, yeah, it's, the, it's the electric version of that car. And I'm like, this is nice. Is beautiful and he's like, you want to test drive it? I said, no, I just want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I had no fear associated with getting that car. And for me in that moment, it was like, wow, yeah, you've good. grown up. Congratulations. You've released man. a little trauma. Let's go. You know what I mean? It's fine on yourself. You deserve it too. You work yeah. really, really hard. And you take care of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that you take care of you too. Yeah. I'm learning that. So. Yeah. That is that is true. I don't even own my own home. I bought my mom a home. Yeah. But I don't own a home. And I I really am the person who does for myself last. Yeah, yeah. I do. So I felt really that was the first vehicle that I've purchased since the success has happened that I, I bought just because I wanted to. Gotcha. And I, I haven't driven, I kept my truck. I haven't driven that thing in, in three weeks now, <laughs> 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 but I'm going to, Okay, okay. I'm going gotcha. to, yeah, I'm going to, um, the things have changed. How has life changed for you in the last, let's just say two years. What's different about David Shands today that was not true of you two years ago? Um, it, it sounds kind of like politically correct, kind of, but I don't think anything has changed about me or what I do. Mm -hmm. I've just been literally doing the same thing. And when you do the same thing, it starts to grow. Mm. I don't think I've, I've done anything differently. I've done the same thing, maybe smarter. I figured out uh, better ways to monetize it because money is more important to me now. It just wasn't important. Like, you just... Do what you can and, you know, you, you do what makes you happy and you make enough to be able to be lit. And now I'm starting to think of, okay, how can I do this and just just further monetize it? Mm -hmm. But I don't think I've done anything different and I don't think I've become anything different. Hmm. I still do the same thing. Mm -hmm. At a much higher level, though. At a much higher level. At a much higher level. You are mm -hmm. very different. So immediately... I am thinking about now 
I, I can't even walk through the streets with you yeah. without <laughs> people like, oh, bro, I love what you've done for the culture. I watch every episode of Social Proof. But that's not me being different. It's no. very different. It's it's a thing. Oh. Well, because now you are you are a recognizable influencer. Mm-hmm. Like you've always had influence, but it was in a really small circle. Yeah. And now that circle has turned into like this massive bubble. Yeah. And there are people now who see you as larger than life. Uh yes. Yes. I, I don't I don't I don't get it just yet because I'm the person that introduces people to another person. Mm -hmm. That's all I've done for my whole life. Mm -hmm. So I've, that's why it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of strange, but it's inspirational knowing that a regular person, I always look at myself as like a regular person, not in a inspiration. I'm not saying it like to inspire you, but um, I've always just not been the best of anything. Mm -hmm. I've always just been the person Mm. who can, Hey, you like me? Cool. But this person over here, they're amazing. Yeah. So that's why we have the podcast and the, the conference that we, uh, that actually the podcast came from was me highlighting everybody else. You just said something. You said, I'm not good at anything. I just do what I I've never do. Been the best. I've never been the best. Mm-hmm. So I was listening to Jim Rohn this morning. Mm-hmm. That's our guy. Yes. Yes. I was listening to him this morning. He was talking about discipline. I was going to come in this morning and uh, do a solo episode to talk about discipline. But, you know, you guys, David has attachment issues. So he had to come in and I'm like, just come on in. Let's talk. (laughs) That's all my friends. (laughs) So I am listening to Jim Rohn. He said something profound because we will get confused with saying, man, I work so hard. I work so hard. I work so hard. And that's why I'm successful. He broke it down so easily. And my whole perspective changed. He said, you are not successful because you work so hard you are successful because you found something that's easy to do Mm. what's easy to do is also easy not to do right and you are successful because you work hard at doing the easy to do thing Uh, that was like it really was because I thought about what we do in my business I'm a business coach the main functions of my of my company are to take sales calls, enroll people into our program, either have students go through an automated course that I've taken time to put together and answer some questions once a week. That's one function of of my business. My other business, my coaching practice, is to, same thing, take sales calls, enroll clients into the coaching program, and I show up once a week to answer their questions and give feedback. It's easy for me to do. Yes. With the Social Proof Podcast, with the Full Transparency Podcast, every single Wednesday or Friday, I come to the same building. We're either in the Social Proof Studio or in the Full Transparency Studio, sitting in front of a camera. I am recording and I'm talking about topics in my lane, easy for me to do. We don't study for this. We don't prepare. We've been preparing all our lives, but yeah. there's no preparation that goes into this. I yeah. show up. I get the hardest thing for me to do to, to do this podcast is to decide what I'm wearing <laughs> that day. Right. <laughs> but the hard work is the discipline that I invoke on myself to stay disciplined to do these or to, or to stay consistent at doing these things. The hard work is actually the consistency. Yeah. The hard work are the habits that I create, meaning If I don't show up for the sales calls, we don't enroll clients and I don't have people coming into that program and I can't do that thing that's easy for me to do. 100%. The success comes from the hard work, which is the discipline and the consistency and people miss that piece. A hundred percent. And I think people look at you and say, I want to do that. And yeah. they'll come in this studio and it'd be so overwhelming. Like, yo, you got the lights and the camera and the mic and the this and the that. And you got the structure and all that kind of stuff. But it typically doesn't start that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think people skip over the skill set of being consistent at something. Mm. Like, just start small. So yeah. we want to create the most amazing content in the world. But uh, one of the things I try to teach people is let's just consistently create something yeah i'd rather you consistently consistently create trash than every once in a while you put the best video you could together Mm -hmm. but let's start getting in the habit and then eventually it won't be as trash yeah three weeks later a month later it'll be a little better yeah 
two months later to be average. Mm -hmm. Two years later, you'll be amazing at it because you had those reps. But people just want to jump over that, which I don't understand. I don't understand either. And and that's the part that actually builds you for this. Like 100%. it builds you for it. And it's the part, what's the word that I'm looking for? Sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's what makes you sustainable. Yeah. Like think about it. Everybody has a skill set, like something that you're gifted at. There's something that everybody can do. Yeah. That part is easy, but to know and not do is the same as not to know. Right. Yeah. Meaning if you have this skill set and you're not doing it, you might as well not have the skill set. Yeah. So again, you going through the processes of creating habits and rituals and routines to, to execute this discipline and this consistency. That's the part that makes you not how good you are at um, interior design, not how amazing you are at interviewing. None of those things matter. You are an amazing interviewer. If you only showed up every six weeks to put an episode <laughs> out when your audience was expecting you to show up weekly, mm -hmm. would social proof be what social proof is? Nah, not, not at all. Know. I literally got a, a, a DM yesterday from a guy who is doing well in business, but he, he, he sent me a message and said, yo, Dave, I need your help, bro. He said, the last couple of years, my offer has been working. Like I've been making so much money. He said, but this year it's hard getting people to open up the budget. He said, yo, I'm really struggling. He said, I'm at a point where I'm about to quit. I don't know if I got to quit, go get a job or what. And what was interesting is, for one, I told him, well, congratulations. You're at a crossroad that every entrepreneur goes through. Yes. Anyone has been successful. They thought to themselves, yo, this is hard. Mm -hmm. This is tough. It's not working out the way I thought it was going to work out. Mm -hmm. um, but one, you have to go through that. And two, I told him, I said, I don't know why you think. Why did, I didn't tell him this part, but I'm telling you all. I don't know why he thinks he has to either quit his business and get a job or struggle in his business and forego getting a job. Mm -hmm. Meaning in his mind, he didn't consider I'm going to have to go get a job to supplement the thing that I'm doing. Yeah. So stopping should never come up mm, in your you. mind. Slowing down sometimes. So mm -hmm. can I tell a story? Yeah. I'm going through my favorite story. I think I wrote it in my book too. I'm going through me and Brandon, Brandon Abrams. Uh, we were coming from Florida. He lived in Jacksonville, Florida to Atlanta. It's pouring down, raining, heavy rain. Like you can't even really see it. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't see it in front of you. And we see these cars lined up along the road with their hazards on smart people pull over, stop and wait for the rain to subside. Right. Mm -hmm. Literally while I'm thinking, I'm like, yo, maybe we should like stop and pull over. This is, this is crazy. But I'm like, nah, we'll just go a little slower, put our hazards on, and we'll we'll be good. Literally, maybe two minutes into that drive, it's dry. No rain mm -hmm. at all. It's like this side of the street, pouring down raining. This side, no rain at all. <laughs> it was the wildest thing. So as we start driving, like, oh, cool, it's only two minutes out. I start thinking about all those people that pulled over. With their hands on. They just stopped. They didn't know. Slowing down is necessary sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Just slow down. But we still got to keep moving. I never forgot that. Because I'm thinking, yo, I wonder how long they're going to sit there until the rain stops. So the yeah. world stops hitting them. And you just stop. Yeah. How much time are you going to take? How much time that are you going to stay was wild. in this same place? That is really profound because... That's actually a metaphor. It's symbolism for how much, how easy it is for people to just stop and stay yeah. in the same place, like in their lives. Like at that moment, you're driving, you're in traffic and people like stop instantly. They yeah. see a little obstacle. They see a little rain yeah. on the, on the path, on, in the journey. They don't want to get wet. <laughs> they don't want to get wet. They see a little cloudiness come on their windshield. Mm -hmm. Even though you've got tools in your vehicle to help you get through, they don't yes. want to activate that because the easy thing to do is just to stop yes. and wait for change to come. Jim Rohn also said this morning, he said, um, he said that someone asked him because his philosophy is that success is easy, right? Because you're building success around something that's easy for you to yeah. do. 
And someone asked him, well, if success is so easy, how come everybody isn't successful? And he's like, well, because, again, what's easy to do is also easy yeah. not to do. And the problem with most people is that they don't seek change. They wait for it. So those people who were on that journey with you and Brandon that day on the road, they were waiting for the clouds to open up. They were waiting for the sun to come. They were waiting for the rain to go. You, however, you and Brandon decided well, we're not going to wait for this change. Yeah. We're going to use the tools that we have. Sure. We're going to use the instinct that we have. And we're going to keep navigating through this journey that doesn't look great. Yeah. But we are going to drive until the weather changes. Yes. Yo, you know what I, I thought about, too? is as I'm driving, there are some people that are on the side of the road. Logically, that's the right decision to make. Yes. And they're looking at me driving slowly, and they're probably thinking, why would they endanger themselves? Their, yeah. themselves? Yeah. Why are they, like, they're so dumb. You look how, they're probably saying, people always in a rush, always impatient. They mm -hmm. need to pull over like us. Mm. They're probably throwing stones at us for moving forward because in their mind, this is the only option. I've got to stop. You Oh, I got I've chills. This brings me to like just listening to this. This whole story could really be this whole conversation 100%. because that that brings me. So I get it. I, I fully understand why people stopped. Yeah. It's the easy thing to do. And I also I also agree that they're right. But I also get why you kept going. It was an easy decision for you to make. And I think that you're right. This brings up in me immediately, like when you're talking to other people and taking advice of other people who hadn't yet experienced the journey. Now you've been through a journey like that where, you know, maybe two miles down the road, the, the forecast could be very different. Yeah. And so you're qualified to give some advice. Hey, well, a few years back, this is what I did. Yeah. This is like going to that friend and saying, my husband and I have been struggling in marriage we have been working hard. We've tried counseling. We have family meetings. We are intentionally taking vacations. We're scheduling sex. We're making sure that we're doing all these things. And on the other end is a friend who'll be scheduling sex. Yes, people schedule sex. Absolutely. Schedule? No, you're just. I mean, you're probably not old enough yet to have gotten to the point where you need to schedule sex. Hey, hey, are you a service based entrepreneur that helps your clients or customers get some type of a result? but you're struggling to post and communicate your message on social media. You don't know how to type a caption that connects and gets people's attention and converts them from just someone who's following you on social to becoming your customer or your client. Great news is that's my superpower. So I'm sending you three text messages every single day, excluding major holidays directly to your phone of exactly what you need to post to get people to buy and convert them into clients and customers. All you have to do is join my program, Post to Paid, and you can do so by texting the words Post to Paid to 404-737-2767. And the best news is just $37 a month. So hurry up, send me the text. I'm looking for it now. But there are some couples that both wife and husband are just. <laughs> I've never had my wife send me a text like tonight with the little, uh, the little uh, tongue emoji. You've yeah, never? Like, Dre like, never sends you a message like, no, yeah, like the little uh, splash emoji? Yeah, 100%. But it's not like 1045 every Thursday. Where, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, but there are, <laughs> there are people. I mean, and, and I think, I don't think it's a terrible idea to schedule intimacy. I'm going to come yeah, back I, to that. I real quick. It. It's just, yeah, it's, it's just, just to make sure you have it. Before. So for example, if, if that's an area where you're struggling in your business or in your relationship, and it's like, I could lose my spouse because he is not feeling served in the intimacy department. Mm. You're going to make sure like, okay, listen, I'm busy. You're busy. But tonight, as soon as dinner is over, we busting down. That's lit. Now, That's you know, we, yeah, we, we talk about that for sure. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, let me get back to my point. Ah, <laughs> She's looking like, tonight, tonight baby. Tonight. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking to that friend who's never been in that situation, mm -hmm. right? And they will say things like, I mean, it shouldn't be that hard. They'll say things like, why, why would you, why would you put so much effort into making this work? It should be much easier. It should be, it should be much more natural. It should be much more organic. And they could be right yeah. based on their own experiences. They had never had a relationship with rain in their journey. Yeah. 
And the easy thing for them to do is to stop and quit and get out. Yeah. But you're like, no, nah, I know because I've talked to my friends like Jeremy Anderson, mm -hmm. who's made, who's weathered some storms. Yeah. Right. And I know that if I keep going, I'm, I'm going to stick it out with my wife, because if I keep going, there's sunshine on the other side of this. And that happens all too often. We get thrown off of our course because we have people or our subconscious in our ear saying, why would you do this? It's just yeah. easier to stop. It's just easier to stop. In fact, you look dumb. I have said to people before, like, girl, all that work you're doing to keep him couldn't be me, girl. And look at me. 40s, single as hell. <laughs> single as I don't know what. Welcome to full transparency. Welcome to full transparency. Maybe I should have stuck it out a little longer. Maybe I should have been scheduling sex. <laughs> I like the title. Scheduling sex. Scheduling sex as a CEO. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Oh my God. Yo, I, I got so many of those stories in my life. You know how you like gather life lessons? Yes. Um, and I doubled out. So it, was, it had to be some point between 2010 and 2012. There was some sort of like, snow ice storm in Atlanta. I was living on 2012. Hill. Was it 12? Yep. I was stuck in it for 18 hours. Me. Wow. Mm -hmm. In my car, ran out of gas. Goodness gracious. Anyway, go I ahead. remember, was it 12? It was 12. Cause there was another one that had to be. It wasn't 15, so bad. Maybe 2012 now, 15 was bad. It was 15 or 16. That was bad too. 2012. I remember because I just started working at, the condo building that I live in now, I was working there at oh, first and they would not, we got all the warnings about this storm coming mm -hmm. later that day. And we're texting, like, do we need to come into work? And they're like, yeah, it should be fine. And we come into work and um, maybe two or three hours into work, they're like, okay, you guys need to go home. And I'm like, great. So now you want us to go out and risk our lives. Yeah. And I literally lived 11 minutes from where I worked at that time, but I was stuck on the road for 18 hours, couldn't get through. Dang. So, yeah, I remember so, that yeah, one. It, it, all right, then it was 12. And at this point, I'm, I'm living on Windy Hill, and I'm working at the Cheesecake Factory on Perimeter Mall. At Perimeter Mall. And we had, uh, I think I was off that day, but my, no, 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 no. I had to go to work that day, but my manager called and said, yo, I want to, are you coming? Because we're open. And at this point, I'm like, man, this is an out. I don't have to go to work today. Yeah. But I was broke and I needed some money. Yeah, and tip. the first was coming up or so, something came up that I, I needed some money. So I'm like, yo, I can be in my feelings. I feel like just staying here mm -hmm. and just chilling. But I remember I got on the road and I think I might have called my mom or somebody. It was like, yo, it's dangerous. Don't go. Don't go. I'm like, yo, but I need this bread. Yeah. So I start driving. I get on the road slowly. I'm not mm -hmm. worried about getting there on time. I'm just worried about getting there. Mm -hmm. So I'm so it's ice on the ground, all that kind of stuff. Only a couple of cars on the road and we're driving and I get to work and there's not a lot of people there. And I'm yeah. like, man, this looks like a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that a lot of people didn't come in and it's valid. You are not coming to work, but not a lot of people can go anywhere, but around there, there are a lot of hotels. Mm. So there was some CEOs and people who got some real paper staying in these hotels. So it's me and like a couple of us. So I remember some of the managers were acting as servers because we were so short staffed, but it was jumping in there. That was the most money I've ever made that day, that day. Wow. And like these, these scenarios always ring in my head, man, if I just get there, mm -hmm. there's always going to be some sort of conditions and I'm not mad at someone for slowing down. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to go to speed limit. I could slow down, take my time. I got my music. I'm listening, slowing and getting there. And then I got there. And that's why, that's why I never stop because I know. Mm -hmm. that eventually once I get to the mark, if I just, if I'm in the place where I'm supposed to be, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And magic happens there, especially because yeah. most people didn't come to work that day. You know, it sounds so perfect in hindsight, Oh yeah. For but sure. in the moment, I know in, in moments for me and moments for you and in moments for everybody who's watching this right now, it's like, yeah, I hear you, but right now I've got this going on. Yeah. I've got, rent that I haven't been able to pay yet. I've got a spouse that's not supportive. I've got family who don't support. 
and they hear us and they're inspired. But in that moment, what was it for you that said, I'm not even considering hindsight Mm -hmm. right now. It's cold outside. It's dangerous. Everybody's telling me not to go, but I'm going anyway. What was that like driving force that said, get up and do it anyway? Um, Probably when I was a kid, all of my friends, like, you, it had to be real bad snow in New Jersey for us to not to go to school, right? For sure. But we're reading the little numbers on the bottom, and wow, our number comes up. Oh, we don't got to go to school. It's cool. So we call our friends. The, the The number one thing that you do up north on a snow day is you get your friends together. Y'all play football because you can play tackle in the streets. You know what I mean? You play football, right? We're just, we're just outside. Something told me to get my shovel and go shovel snow. I'm like, dang, I really don't want to do this, but maybe I'll early enough, I'll shovel snow, make some money, then come back and play with my foot, my, my friends play football with them and I'll be good. So this is another moment as a child. I take some time to do something that I don't want to do, mm-hmm. but I get the reward and chances are like they don't come out until later anyway. Yeah. So I got to make the money and go play football. Mm-hmm. I got so many scenarios where I went through something that I didn't want to go through, Mm -hmm. which now it's easier because I can pull from those references. So the reason someone's saying, well, it sounds easy is because you haven't tried it not once. Mm. You don't have any experience of going through anything. Your whole life, you quit, you quit, you quit, you quit. And now when you see somebody enduring something, you're like, oh, well, it's easy for you. No, what's pushing me through that is, the countless scenarios when I went through the pain and it was okay at the end, everybody that's ever went through something, Mm. it's always been okay at the end. Mm. Going through a divorce, a breakup, it's been bad for people, right? But if you sit and you get depressed and you let your feelings take over, well, it'll be bad forever. But once you get up and say, all right, y'all, I'm about to start working on me. And after breakups, I think that what's the formula? You cut your hair, you go vegan. (laughs) You get in the gym. Go get back in your spiritual bag. You know what I mean? Huh. This is sounding really <laughs> this is sounding really familiar. But on the other side You change your hair, you get in the gym, uh, you start watching what show. you're eating, you do your spiritual stuff. So this year I, I got braids and I hadn't had braids in seven years. <laughs> I've been working out consistently all year, yep. definitely watching what I eat. How do you feel? I did go on a spiritual fast. How do you feel? Um I feel amazing, but I was just thinking it was necessary. As you're, as you're telling the story, I am thinking about people who say things like, I was born for this. Mm. And I don't know. Like, I think maybe you'll hear me say it one day in the future. I can't say I'll never say that again. But it's not that I think we were all born for this. We were all born with the promise of achieving goals and dreams and acting yeah. on purpose, right? But instead of born for this, as I'm listening to you, I'm like thinking, wow. I was really built for this. Mm. It was the journey. Like I was struggling at first between the words between built and developed. And I'm thinking like, what's the difference between the definitions of built and developed, developed, right? Well, you can build a development, you can develop a building. So they kind of are synonymous, but born is something that I hear people. Oh, I was born for this. Yeah. We were all born for this, but were you built for this? Mm. Meaning did you, embrace your journey and you went through that that thunderstorm right and did you recall that moment did you go back to your childhood where you're shoveling snow and now as an adult you have an option to navigate an opportunity through the slow through the snow like did you just allow life to happen to you or did you allow life to build you Mm. built for this a hundred percent and that's the only way you get built for it is if you got to face some stuff that's uncomfortable. Yeah. You have to. There's no other. And if you haven't, if you don't have the stories yourself, you got to be able to draw from some people who do have the story. That's why stories are so important. Like you tell your story often about kind of going in the house and the kids are, the, the kids are, or losing your house and the kids are fighting over your daughter's room. Mm-hmm. That moment, mm-hmm. that story helps you. But for the person who didn't go through that, the story helps them to say, oh, wow, Donnie went through that. Yeah. Great, right? But we we have to understand that everything's going to be okay on the other side. If you don't understand it, you'll never get through anything. Yeah. You just got to keep walking. And even when it's not okay, 
it's okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah, like you don't always get the result that you want. I don't always get the result that I want. If I got the result that I wanted all the time, life would look very different for me right now. But I am still okay. I was doing a live yesterday, and when I said my age, you know, people do what they do, and they couldn't believe how old I was. And somebody asked me, how do you maintain your youthfulness? Like, how do you still look so young and vibrant, right? Take them young boys. Yeah. You know what? I get approached by, like, 25-year-olds. <laughs> Why do, a, sir, a you know sir, I mean? <laughs> my daughter is 21 years old. There is no way. Um, a TikToker. But, I, but I've given this a lot of thought because... I don't use expensive products. You know, I don't go in for Botox and fillers and all of that. I, I I believe because I just have a different perspective. Like, I am different. I have people around me who, when I talk about some of my hardship and talk about some of the challenges in the journey, they'll say, you know, in order to comfort me, and mm-hmm. they'll say things like, oh, well, be careful. You don't have to work so hard. You don't have to do so much in the gym. You don't have to stay up so many nights, you know, so many hours in the night. And it's like those people, because they love me and they care for me, they're trying to highlight my out. Right. Mm. And when I hear that, it frustrates me in real time. And I'm like, I don't want you to highlight my out. I just want you to support my stay. Yeah. Right. My fight, what Mm. I'm doing. And my perspective is different. Like I don't see things as really obstacles. I see them as opportunities when I see things that happen, and I'm not just talking about in business, I'm talking about in relationship, I'm talking about as a parent, when I see things that in the moment didn't feel good, I always look at it as an opportunity, something that I get to resolve, something that I get to learn from. And sure, it doesn't always feel good in the moment, but that mindset has brought me true peace and happiness, like true joy. There are painful moments that I have experienced in my life but not a single one that has ripped out my joy, yeah. right? And I think that happiness is a cheat code for youth. And I encourage anybody, yeah, I, I encourage anybody and everybody to really get to the core, to the root of what happiness is for you. I will turn away opportunities. I will move a little slower than yeah. you want me to yeah. I, because every step of the way I have to make sure Am I going to be happy doing this? That's really, really, really important because I need to be 70 looking 40, Mm -hmm. right? It's really, really important because I want to be valuable while I'm here. And when you spend so much of your life being unhappy, you really aren't any value to anybody. You can't perform. And I I think that's a cheat code for sure. I think one uh, issue I've had is one, I've always had the positive mindset, not always, but over the last, I would say, 20 years or so, I've developed this positive mindset that everything is going to be okay on the other side. Mm-hmm. I've never been through anything that killed me. Mm-hmm. And no one can say that they've never gotten through the thing. Mm-hmm. No one can say. If you have breath in your lungs, you can't say there's something that killed me. Right. But uh, that has hurt me in relationships sometime, um, or even coaching or consulting people because I know that it's going to be okay on the other side. So you're crying, you're sitting in the mud and you're like, you're, you're there. Mm -hmm. I know that everything's going to be okay. But what I had to learn is that uh, people don't necessarily want to know that it's going to be okay. You got to let people cry. And I've had a challenge crying with people yeah, or like sitting in it with people. And I know that's a sign of, true leadership maturity you know mm-hmm. what i mean so my super positive mindset oh everything's gonna be okay not everybody wants to hear that oh. so um that's been a challenge for me um yeah I've, it can make you feel it can make you appear to be unrelatable or yeah. rough and abrupt 100%. and i think i think i have a challenge with that sometimes too it depends on what the topic is um but i have a challenge in that area sometimes too because i've survived it like yeah. It's really difficult to come to me and talk about like a breakup and think I'm going to sit here and cry with you for hours. (laughs) You know how many goddamn on breakups I didn't have? (laughs) Girl, we're going to be all right. We are always all right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can come off a little uh, abrupt. And so I have to consciously 
uh, be in the moment. And, you know, I end up feeling stupid because like recently I have a girlfriend who's going through a situation with her significant other and they were like calling it quits. And my position is always I support whatever decision you make. I'm not encouraging a decision one way or the other. I cannot tell you what to do. I'm not that person to tell you what to do in your relationship. I am going to support whatever decision you want to make. And so she calls me and she's like, we're calling it quits. I'm done with this and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, girl, I support you. And so I immediately, I'm an, I'm an immediate action taker in, in most areas of my life. And so when she tells me I'm done, you know, and they've, they've got children and they've got property, I'm immediately going into action mode. Okay, well, the first thing that you guys need to do is have a conversation about how you're going to co-parent the children. Um, who's keeping the house? Are you blah, blah, blah. And we spend two hours going through this plan so that she can amicably and responsibly have this conversation so there's as little drama as possible. And then a week later, they're on Instagram, living it up, baby this, <laughs> baby that, my man, my man, my man, my man, my man. So I... It was another moment in which I went against my own principle of just staying out of it, right? Um, but it, it just makes me feel when I do that, when I when I stop and relish in the moment with you, and then I look, just like with coaching clients, we'll sit and we'll create this plan, and not everybody's going to do what you suggest that they do. And you'll look, you'll pop up on Instagram one day, and when did we discuss this? Where was this sale? Mm -hmm. You know, and I've had clients who did like 70% off sales. Who? When did we discuss that? <laughs> and so then there's a part of me that feels like foolish for allowing you to relish in this moment of fear mm -hmm. and uncertainty. When I know at the end of the day, everything's going to be OK. You're either going to go back to that man or you're going to not go back to that man. And one day you will get a new man. Yeah. Right. So I have to remind myself that people still need to be loved on. And sometimes for people being loved on means just sit there and listen. 100%. Sit there and listen. I want to, before we, um, I know you got to get out of here. And I do too. And my daughter is graduating from college Aww, tomorrow. Amazing. Yes. So that is awesome. I'm so proud of her. She did that in exactly four years. It's crazy. I remember going to her high school and seeing her. Mm -hmm. And I was going to speak in a class. And I was like... Deja, what you doing here, mm -hmm, girl? Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. amazing. You gave Deja one of her first jobs. Yes. She yes. worked at the kiosk. She was filling mm -hmm. in, selling some T-shirts. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> I wanted her to impress you so bad. Yeah. I'm like, Deja, this is my friend now. Don't we do business <laughs> together? Don't come in here looking like no slacker. And I remember coming to the kiosk and dropping her off. And we did like a quick training. Deja has always been like a really quick study. Oh, bro, she was killing it. Always a really quick study. And so we did this quick sales training because she hadn't sold anything before. And I remember your kiosk was downstairs at that time mm -hmm. in Cumberland Mall. And I went upstairs and I'm taking video. I still have these videos on my phone. <laughs> I'm taking video of her. And then I remember coming into the e-complex a couple days later and you had hired some of her friends. She didn't brought her friends yo, on yeah, board. Bro, she just put her friends on. I'm <laughs> like, yo, I, and I, I don't even, I don't know how it happened, but I just remember <laughs> she's like, oh, I, my my friend, can they come? I'm like, okay, but you just got a job, <laughs> but uh, okay, <laughs> no yeah. She definitely put on like two or three of her friends. I'm like, I'm putting up. All, all your little friends on payroll. That's if she up. was of driving age, if if I didn't have the uh, if I didn't have such a busy schedule, she would have been able to work for you longer. But yeah. I couldn't I couldn't keep bringing her up there, and it was a, a can, distance. Can I can I get her back when she graduates? Can mm. she at the mall? No, I don't. I got the kiosk, but I got some stuff going on. Um, so honestly, so let's talk about that. So when Deja graduates, I have, you know, my goal, my ultimate vision is to create a family business, build a family business. And so Brianna is my cousin who I often call my, my, my first daughter, so mm -hmm. to speak. I think Deja be in her feelings when I say that sometimes, Bree. So we know it's a thing, but I can't say that Deja is my first daughter, but Brianna was my first baby. I think <laughs> I can say that, um, because I used to babysit Brie. And at one point she was like the only kid in the family. And so I came up with her. She's my assistant now mm -hmm. and she won't stay in that position. She'll serve in that position for some time until we figure it out. But I just told her yesterday, I think it was yesterday, Wednesday. And I told Dej, as soon as Deja graduates, um, when she moves back to Atlanta, the two of them are going to be responsible for helping me make this an eight figure company. Mm. Period. Love it. I'm not playing any games. It's time for both of them to step in 
to more defined roles. We've kind of just been playing with it because honestly, if I'm being honest, I know that both of these young ladies are capable. I know that they're both hard workers and I know that they both operate with integrity. Yeah. But where exactly they fit into the vision and what their day-to-day responsibilities are. I haven't been able to Bree just recently graduated college and Deja's about to graduate. Mm. So I haven't been able to spend enough time with them together to really sort this out. I have yeah. an idea, but I really want them to come in and step in and be like, Donnie, this is what we need to do. This is what we're doing. This is the deal that we've got on the table. This is what we've got pending. I cannot wait. Yeah. But you know, um, as you extend your team to me, my team is always an extension of, awesome. of to you as awesome. well. Thank so you. thank you. That is that. Yeah. 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 What's 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 in the future? What's in the future for us? What's in the future for us? Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing things for sure. Um, I you know what we would. Uh, I need to get even more clear on who you want to become. Mm hmm. Cause I think sometimes I'll, I'll I I'll push you into an area, not because it's like I have a self interest reason, but anytime you give me an inkling of something that you want to do, mm-hmm. I can see a good strategy. And if I don't see you like doing it, I'm like, yo, Donnie, this is where we need to go. This is where mm-hmm. we need to go. So, uh, but I don't want to be pushy. Yeah. I'd be lightweight scared to mention stuff to you. I don't want you to know what I'm working on. I don't know what I don't want you to know what I'm dreaming for mm. because the moment I say it, yeah. like I said some time ago that um when Facebook was my platform, mm. Uh, when it first came out, like I used to say, um, people people started calling me like the Oprah of Facebook. Yeah. And I've always aspired to have like a talk show and, you know, have these important high level conversations. And, you know, I just see me in that space. I really do. As soon as that escaped my mouth, <laughs> you need your own podcast. You need to do your own uh-huh. podcast. You need to. Do, and then it's not just but but it's not just a hey, you'd be great at your own podcast. It was like constant nagging about this podcast. Now I will say, you know, on the flip side, I think it was, and it was only nagging because I wasn't accepting it. You know, when we started social proof or when I joined social proof, I think I joined on episode 50. I think we Mm -hmm. went back and found out when I came into social proof, I didn't have an understanding of what a podcast really was. I'm like, so what what are we doing? Just talking in the camera, talking into cameras for fun and people are just listening to audio that didn't, the, the vision didn't line up. Yeah. So podcasting for me is a new idea in the last three years. I love podcasting. Good. This is my show. Good. This is my version of my Oprah Winfrey show. For like sure. I love this. This is where I shine and I thrive. I have full understanding, but I can't pretend like I'm not like, Hmm. I'm constantly like, how do we take this to the next level? How do we merge this? How do we navigate this? How does this become huge? How does social proof become huge? How does full transparency become huge and not dim a light on what I do with social proof? Or how does social proof get huge and not dim a light on what I do with full transparency? Like I want to make this clear. Mm. What are we doing? Like I honestly, um, Oprah Winfrey is a strong influence for me, but also Bob Proctor. And when I saw Bob Proctor and Sa- Sandy Gallagher merge and do the Ga- the Proctor and Gallagher um, group, I think it is, it was the most genius thing yeah. I'd seen. Like two amazing thought leaders who didn't really need each other independently figured out a way to work together and and really grow something big and has grown something now that has outlived Bob Proctor. Yeah. Right. And so when I think about you and I, I am, I, I really think like we've been bonded in business since 2014, mm-hmm. 2015. I think this is a forever thing. I think we will continue to evolve and grow, but we got to go big. Yeah. Like the impact has to be profound. And I still think, I still think we're thinking small. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think so. Uh, I mean, but again, thinking small is relative. I th- we're but thinking we, right now. Yeah. We're yeah. thinking right now. So again, when you're like pushing these ideas, cause you are pushing, mm-hmm. you're not just the last thing I didn't push. 
The oh, last you, now you hadn't had time. You just started talking about it last week. I mean, yeah, this I, week. I, I did, but see how I approached it. I said, hey, I don't want to be pushy, but here's a concept. <laughs> <laughs> here's an idea. For Listen, you. it's not been a, you need to. It's been a couple of days. You haven't had time to be pushy yet. I'm not going to be pushy. You, no, but really. I don't think you like being pushed. No, hold on. Let me get this iPad. Okay. Really, while I'm talking, I wanted to show you something. Yeah. Um, accountability is different for me when I'm not ready. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, I do. I like to be talked to. Um, I think I've always had like an authoritative issue. And when you be pushing, it really feels a lot like authority, right? Like you better do this but or I you won't be successful. Like that. I'll just but that's how it feels. It, I just roast a little bit. It don't be like, I don't push just for clarity. I don't push Donnie. I'll just mention it and roast her till she does it. That is, that is the truth. <laughs> yeah. I, um, so I'm very like, let me ask you this question. Mm hmm. And your answer may be different than mine. Okay. Well, let me not even pose it that way. I'll just tell you, I've never done anything successfully or started something that I was ready to do. Oh, for sure. I have never done anything that I was ready to do. Honestly, if I'm being honest, everything that I've done that's really big, I've done with my back up against the wall. Yeah. From starting with my clothing store, back was against the wall. Network marketing, my back was against the wall. Donnie Wiggins, who she is today, it started because my back was against the wall. And maybe a little bit of my apprehension comes in. Um, my back is my back isn't against the wall anymore, yeah. right? Um, and so now, like if you had said this to Donnie, maybe seven years ago, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it so. with that <laughs> hunger. But now it's like, uh. Let me see if I want to do that. Yeah. Let me see if this fits into the plan, right? I always lose this particular note that I'm trying to show you, but I want to show you that this is this is a thing that has been a thing. So David wants me to move into doing events, my own events. David believes that uh, I've never done events before. Oh my gosh, Donnie. If you start talking about the stuff you used to do. Okay, but it's important. That, it's not important. You tell stories about what you used to no, do all the time. No, it's no, important. No, 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 Okay, okay let, can, I, can, I take, can I say something? Okay, we're full transparency now, okay? So I mentioned to Donnie, yo, I think you need to do an event. You need to be the person bringing people together. Mm -hmm. She tells me, Oh, I used to do them all the time. No, 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 no. That's not how it happened. You said, Donnie, I don't think I've ever seen you do your own event. Okay. Yes, and I said, thing. oh, that's not true. I used to do them all the time. And he said, when? And I told you, and you said, oh, well, I haven't seen it. And I said, right. that could be true. Cool. And then I just kind of shared with you how I used to do those events. Good. Okay. And the while only reason. Me, while mm -hmm. she's telling me, in my head, my answer is, Donnie, I don't care what you used to do. I'm saying what I saw. What I'm seeing, you, here's the, here's the biggest issue. I know that Donnie knows she's amazing, but I don't think she understands the true power that she has. And I don't think you even understand your own capability. You, you know, I, you walk with a confidence, you have a track record of success, but I, I don't think you know how other people revere you. The first thing, even when like starting this podcast, I was like, yo, your show is going to be way more successful than me as a podcaster. You as a podcaster are going to be way more successful because I know the power of her voice, right? So I was saying it's, it's that time now. I'm just looking at from a uh, bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. Oh, the bird's eye view. Bird, We're bringing yeah, that full circle. Bird's, <laughs> eye. bird's eye view. I'm seeing that... Donnie has a, um, you have a following, but you are constantly attached to, you're a part of a thing. So people might look at you as my co-host, a part of the podcast, or you get booked to speak a lot where you are speaking on the stage. You are mm -hmm. speaking for TD Jakes. You are, um, you're, you're, you're a speaker at events. And I just know that when you jump in your bag and you become the person where people want to speak on your stage, 20x amplification of. So you, 
you are suggesting that I create the stage. Yes. A hundred percent. And I don't have a problem doing that. Like once I finally accepted the fact that I'm going to do this podcast, Mm -hmm. I did it. Yes. I was coming in to meet with you like in full transparency. I was coming into the studio, into the clubhouse to meet with you. You were still doing a podcast. What's that? This was when full transparency started. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll back up a little bit. There was a Sunday that you were holding a podcast conference. We were here. I was speaking. And when I arrived, you had been talking about me to the audience and saying, I've been trying to get Donnie to do this podcast, blah, blah, blah. And I'm on stage and I'm like, yo, you just threw me under the bus. (laughs) Like, tell everybody, tell her she needs a podcast. And the audience is like, You absolutely need the podcast, blah, 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 blah. That was a Sunday. Monday, I'm coming in to meet with you. I'm sitting in the chair right outside this room. Reese comes out and he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's up? What you doing today? And I'm like, oh, me and Dave are about to shoot. We were going to do some some short content. Me and Dave are about to shoot some content. He said, "Eh, you're going to shoot your podcast today. I'm like, Reese ain't the boss of me. Who the hell does he think he is? I'm going to shoot my podcast today. And he's like, you are. And I'm like, but I'm not even dressed for it. I don't even know what I would talk about. I don't have a guest. I don't have anything. He's like, Donnie, you're going to shoot the podcast today. This is the very next day after in that room, you had told all these people and I verbally made the commitment. I'm going to do it. I am a woman of integrity. So when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So Reese was like, you look great today. Let's do it. Ryan was here. Mm hmm. Ryan's like, I got equipment in the car. (laughs) (laughs) And Reese and Ryan worked together. And literally two or three hours later, because they're both perfectionists, I called a couple of guests. I filmed two episodes that day. The very next day we came back, I filmed like three more episodes. It started because I verbally committed. Now, this could be problematic. I am not suggesting that my thought that my it's not even my thought process because I know what to do. I'm thinking what you're thinking. I'm just not doing right. And so it could be problematic. I drag my feet on making the commitment because for me, when I make the commitment, it gets real. It's in stone. And so when you're saying these things to me, I'm like, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I really am like that. That actually would be real dope. I should be. I should. I do need my own podcast. I'm going to be lit. He right. It's going to piss up. And. The events, I was looking for the note. I got so much information in here. The events is already like there. And I told you that like, I just, I haven't made the verbal commitment, but it's already something I've been thinking of. So what I am going to do right now. Here we go. Here we go. On full transparency. Here this race. Let's go. Donnie is doing an event. Okay. We we ain't talking about the events we did pre COVID. We are talking (laughs) about events today in real time because all that stuff you used to do don't matter. Right. Didn't I tell you that I said that on my first episode of full transparency, y'all keep relishing in the, the, I used to be an athlete. I used to be this. I used to be fine. Mm -hmm. I used to be all these things. (laughs) And I'm talking about these events that I used to do that I haven't done now in the last four or five years. I'm doing an event and I'm doing an event within the next 75 days. And the only reason I'm saying 75 days is because I don't have access to my calendar to really look at it. There are some major events coming up. I know in the next 60 days and I need it to make sense. Let's say next 90 days. I'm doing it in the next event next 90 days. And it's going to be headlined by myself. I'm creating the stage and I'm looking for people to invite to my stage to come and impact some people. And you know why, you know, do you know why I, uh, I think I, I, I have a good assessment of who I'm talking to mm-hmm. when I'm talking to somebody. Right. So I know I can, I can share a bunch of ideas that maybe I have for you and you are going to, you're going to sift through the things that work for you. You'll pull it out. The rest you'll leave, right? Because nobody can force you into doing anything. Mm-hmm. But when I'm talking to somebody else, I might not talk to them in that manner. I'll just encourage whatever they're doing yeah. because I know they can't handle it. Mm-hmm. Or my idea, they'll take exactly what I'm saying and do it. And I'm not, I, I try not to tell people to do exactly what I'm telling you to do. Mm-hmm. I'm saying a bunch of stuff and some people are mature enough to pick it. Oh, I'll do this part. Okay, I'll take this. And the rest of it is going to be my own sauce. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I just know like once I, we all need a push. 
For yeah, sure. I know I've Neo is that person for me. He pushes, pushes, no matter how much. So much so. Mm-hmm. Neo will call. And he's like Shout out to Neo. He still ain't done that thing yet. I saw it in there. You did? Yeah. The trend? Yeah. Look at that. Look at the trip. I ain't, I I ain't get the email. Oh, okay. He, did he do it yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so Neo be pushing and pushing and pushing, and I don't like it. Okay, so much so he'll I'll call him be like, "Yo, talk to me," and I was like, "Yo, Neo, say hello. Just say hello. Let's have a little bit of small talk." You know what I mean? <laughs> so yesterday he called me. Yesterday he's like, "Yo," he's I, I he called. And I picked up, and I was like, hello? He's like, yo, this is what we knew. I said, Neo. He said, oh, my fault, bro. Man, how was your day? Get you know what I mean? But it, it comes from, in business, he's always pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, and I don't like it. However, those pushes mm-hmm. are exactly what I need. I know how to, like, take, I know how to take a push, mm-hmm. right? But that's exactly what I needed. You are my push. Yeah. You are my push for sure. But, so, in building this business with my girls, um, that's what I'm looking for. I, mm. first of all, you need to be my agent. Okay. Because successful people, I'm a talent. You're a talent. We both need agents. Who I We need be, agents. Oh my gosh. I would be a much better number two than number one. I'm both. I'm a number one and I'm a number two. Oh my gosh. I operate well in both spaces. Now I, I think that I think that I can operate well as a number two as long as I'm a number one somewhere yeah. because I have such a loud, powerful voice. I got to use it. Like, yeah. I can't stifle it, right? Um, but I, I, I'm one of those odd people, and if you read the book um, Traction, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. There are people who are either number ones or a number two, and there's a very small percentage of people who are both. I'm both. I would be an amazing agent. Yeah, I need. Oh my gosh. We both need agents. Where's my Jerry Maguire? Yeah, oh my gosh. Oh. Where's my Jerry Maguire? Listen, if you present the play, if you can mm. draft the plays, present me with the plays, and allow me to choose the plays, we can run this thing up. Mm. Then I see billion dollar statuses. Yeah. Like, mm. there's so, as an entrepreneur, like, even when you're coming to me with ideas, like, I'm not just an entrepreneur, I am, I am an employer. I am a CEO. I am a coach. I am responsible. I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm responsible for so much. Sometimes it's like, I'm going to do it. But when you present it, I'm in the middle of thinking about, okay, did I pay the final tuition payment? Did I do this? Do I do the payroll process today? And it's like, okay, I got it. Let me add it to my things to do. I need somebody to fill, to, to, to receive and filter through these deals, present them to me and let's run this thing up. Like, I am really looking for, and Brianna and Deja both have to be, or this won't work out. You have to think for me and you have to be able to think like me. You have to know what to accept, what not to accept. I need these girls, maybe after about a year of really working with me, I need them to know this brand so intimately that they're telling me you need to do events. Yo, you know what? If I was your agent, you would be like the cussing Sarah Jakes. Let's say, get it. I, I, yo, I would, pro- I promise you. I, mean, I, I don't have the time to do it. No, but you got the time. I don't. I'll pay you whatever you need. I don't. I can't afford it anyway. I'm, I can't afford you. I don't have the time. Mm-mm. But yeah, yo. I, if I, anybody I just, I just sees that, vision. because that's yo, who I am. Yes. That is who I am. You I be mean, the cussing, twerking Sarah Jakes. I will be you. the twerking Sarah Jakes. <laughs> if you guys like, they don't know what that means, but. I am a, I, I was born in New Orleans. I was raised in College mm-hmm. Park, Georgia. And booty dancing is all I know. And so when I'm celebrating, like with my students and clients, it's like an internal funny thing that they look forward yeah. to. When somebody does something good, I be in my seat and I'm like, hey, okay, <laughs> made me so happy. I want to twerk something. And every now and then you'll hear um, a, a, a curse word come you out of my mouth. Sarah, I'm not, a yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, Yo, I'm, Ann, let me tell you though, because there's, just there's cut me nobody, off. I'm sorry, because <laughs> I just got to give you flowers, man, because there's nobody that's going to like burn you up on the stage. It's not like, you can come behind somebody and they're going to be like, oh, well, who's this? Like, you can hold your own with anybody on the stage. Yeah. You can hold your own with anybody in podcasts, anybody in coaching, execution and building a business. You are really, listen, y'all need, y'all really need to be like lobbying, sending your resume saying, <laughs> yo, I want to manage you. <laughs> I want to be your agent. I want to be able to shop you. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine what she would look like on a press kit? Do you know what Fabulous a dream things? of mine would be? 
if I, if my husband managed me in that way, oh. that that's like the vision. And I think maybe I'm so attached to that. Vi- like I really see this family business. I really see like this alpha male like you who sees this vision and they're able to connect the dots and make it happen. Like that's what I would really love for my life. But in the meantime, what we talked about, the, oh man. Aww. Man, dang, that would be so lit. That would be All so right, lit. All right, so now DM her, let her know that she'll be the perfect husband. No. So in the meantime, well, no. maybe. Uh, no? okay. I mean, it's anything, it's, anything is possible. But no, that's, that's really like, like I dream and have this vision of a family business. Like I have, before I even had Six Figure EDU or Donnie Wiggins Global or podcasting, I dreamed of my family working. Like I literally had these visions, like literally in my dreams, I could see my family and there's two more people that I really want to create a space for. I could see us working on something, didn't know what it was, Mm -hmm. but I also have seen the bigger picture with me and my husband. And I just really believe that that's going to happen. I I really hope I'm, I'm prayerful. It's just the perfect position. Like we just out here building something from the ground up and you know how you know how to go out there and make the connections and 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 get the I deals. Know, I know the perfect person for you. What'd you say? I know the perfect person for you. Who? Whisper it. <laughs> Whisper it. Just do this. And, I can't. I can't. Are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you just described like. Well, uh, all right, get them DMs coming, y'all. All right, slots are open. All right, well, there's that. <laughs> a great episode just turned awkward because that person was probably going to watch this and I already know Reese is going to pull the clip just because he's going to pull the clip. Y'all, I don't be pulling these clips. He's going to pull the clip just to embarrass me a little. <laughs> but it's all good. But no, that's that's really the vision that I see. I just I just want this unit of, of us. And then And that doesn't mean that, and I'm not, that doesn't mean that he works for me. I want us to work together to build this thing and really run it up. In a very similar way as um, Tuary, I think is how you say his name, Sarah Jakes' husband, Mm -hmm. like, is really out there and they're building something big and there's no ego attached. There's no, I'm the man and I should be in Mm -hmm. the front. There's none of that. It's just Mm -hmm. a, we understand the vision. We understand what we're doing it for. We want to, we want to impact and put so many people on, like, we don't see ego. We're not competing. I've been in, in, in situations where I felt like I was competing. I don't want any of that. Yeah. I want something that's just we understand the bigger vision. And if right now we're behind the scenes pushing you out there, fantastic. And if that turns into me being behind the scenes pushing him out there, also fantastic. We understand the bigger picture, and that's that's yes. really what I want. Sarah Jakes had a splash of city girl in her. Listen, I, so when I, my old dating profile used to say, um, this was, I think 2018, 2017, 2018. If you saw me on Tinder or Bumble or something at that time, it, my personality thing said Michelle Obama mixed with a little Cardi B. Mm, That's about it. That's it right there. Cause Michelle got a little uh -uh in her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sarah got it too though. Sarah with, got it too. With, with, with a dash of Ayana Van Zandt, because you're getting your... With a little yeah, razzle dazzle. Yeah. a little razzle dazzle up in that thing. Mm-hmm. First of all, Ayanla is probably up my alley. Young, Can you imagine younger Ayanla? Oh, come on, man. What? She, could you imagine if Ayanla was coming up today <laughs> in this time where certain things are acceptable today that wasn't acceptable back then? Yeah, if Yala, Listen. If she, if she drank a little bit. If, if she drank Hennessy. Eva, I got Ayanla taking a shot or two. Oh, yeah. Ayanla ta- I got Michelle Obama taking a shot. Hit the weed? Michelle. Michelle Obama. You mean they told me Obama don't hit the weed a little they, bit? Come on, man. Uh, you know. I ain't saying they do, but I'm not saying they don't. And just for clarity, whether if they do, I think it's great. If they don't, I also think it's great. You know what I mean? Oh That's my the god! Title. Oh, the Obamas hit the weed. The Obamas. No, <laughs> the no, Obamas. no. <laughs> oh my god! Not Yo. the Donnie smokes. I've never seen her smoke, but hmm? you hit the weed? No, I don't Love smoke. Edible? I have had a gummy or two. Yeah, I know at home. (laughs) (laughs) I got a whole drawer full of those. Um, No, I'm not really. I've never been into um, drugs and stuff. Mm. And I'm a fake drinker. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was recently on vacation and um, celebrating a birthday. 
and we were, why do we feel like we have to take shots and drink mm. for celebratory moments? I don't know. I've always thought that was so stupid, but I was doing it right. Um, very foolish decision, but I was doing it anyway. And we're taking shots and we're on this resort and we're taking shots and the resort shots are weak. Mm. So I'm taking them back. Like, just give me one. Give me yeah. a white, brown. It don't matter at this point. Let me shoot them back. The walk from <laughs> the bar back to the room. There are some bushes there in between. And um, I couldn't make it to the room. Oh, wow. I had to use the bathroom. I you peed in the you. bushes. Oh, you little scallywag, you. I was a straight <laughs> scallywag. Okay, I'm in, I'm too damn old for this. And as this is happening, I'm like, why are you doing things that you were doing when you were 23? But it's the most fun. Right. It's the most fun experience. Let me tell you something. I got in that bed. I don't, oh, you gosh. ever had that night where you don't even remember falling asleep? Mm -hmm. I don't even remember how I got in the bed. The middle of the night, there's a rumble in my stomach. Mm. That was awkward. Tried to go back to sleep. Another rumble in my tummy. I said, oh, this could be a situation. Go to that bathroom. I threw up for like two hours straight. Oh, wow. All that liquor. And of course, I vowed to never drink again. Prayed and to that's the porcelain God. I prayed to the porcelain God. <laughs> but I realized that this is a recurring prayer that happens every five years or so. Mm. Real quick, on this particular trip, were you alone? No, there were many people at the resort. Yeah, I mean there was there was a bunch of people, and I there were a lot of people who were there celebrating things, and we were what a you dodge know. that was. <laughs> no, I mean that's the truth. There were many people, many people on the plane, many people in the airport, mm -hmm. many people at the resort. Yeah, yeah. You weren't there alone. So, huh? You weren't there alone. We're never alone. Yep. How many people in this world? God's always with you. God is always with me. <laughs> God is always with me. So anyway, oh, that gosh. being said, you got anything else? No. All right. Close us out with a good word. Close me out with an action step. Um, don't stop. Slowing down is okay. I don't care what everybody else is telling you. They're telling you, you need to take it to the max and give it your all. Giving it your all isn't always the answer. Sometimes you need to slow down. But... Slowing down doesn't mean stop. So keep moving forward, gather your steps, gather your footing, and just know that on the other side of whatever storm you're going through, there is sunshine. Night has never hit twice. Winter has never hit twice. There's always night and then day, and then night and then day, and then night and day. And there's going to be freezing outside. It's going to be winter, but then we are going to hit the spring summer and it's not going to be an amazing summer it's not going to be beautiful pool weather for the rest of your life i'm telling you winter's coming so um it's not as bad as you think it's going to be but it's not as easy as it's going as you think it's going to be that's my word and that wasn't as good as you thought it was going to be i thought it was good you thought that was going to hit you thought that was the clip that's going I was viral actually a freestyle at the top of the head i could so. tell you good. need to I read a book. I think it saved somebody. You need to read some. That books. wasn't good. When you said night ain't coming twice, and Night's you started talking about the pool ain't gonna merge with the sand and the ocean, I didn't say and, that. and <laughs> I didn't say that. Pool season. It's pool season. Maybe I just went over your head, okay? And maybe you went under. Maybe you went right over. now. You might be in a night time of your life. Jim Rohn talks about the seasons of life, mm -hmm. where you got summer, spring, summer, spring, winter, fall, autumn. No, that's not a. I'm sorry, it's, it's not fall what. Fall, autumn is fall. They're very different. Fall and autumn are not. So how the many same. seasons are there? Summer, spring, winter, fall, autumn. You're telling me that there's five seasons? Look it up. You sound crazy. You sound crazy. Okay. Uh, I turned my phone off. Okay. What well, does it say? Mine is on. How many seasons are there? Fall and autumn is like the same stuff. No. You tell me where fall is and where autumn stops. When is autumn? Oh my gosh. Now you gotta so switch honestly, up. I just went over your head. It's okay. No, honestly, um, I think they eliminated autumn, but Who autumn is they? and when what are you talking about? Autumn is always September first to November thirtieth. Public school? <laughs> you did, right? I did both. Clearly. Autumn is not 
Autumn, it says autumn and fall are used interchangeably as words for the season between summer and winter. Both are used in American and British English, but fall occurs more often in American English. Autumn is considered to be the more formal name for the season. Are you still trying to win this after it's telling you that fall and autumn is the same you. thing? Like, listen, autumn occurs just a wee smidget before fall. You sound more and more crazy as you try to defend Autumn it. occurs just a wee smidget before fall. The For more sure. you try to defend it, the crazier you sound. You know that, right? For sure. Who's Googling it? Anybody saw you Autumn just as its own it. season? You just Googled it. Anyway, this has been another amazing episode <laughs> of Full Transparency with Donnie Wiggins. We have had uh, my favorite guest. David will always be my Aww. favorite guest sitting here. You guys, you know how to follow him and to follow us. Make sure you are looking out for the next episode of Social Proof Podcast. If you are a person looking to build your authority and influence via a coaching and consulting program and even podcasting, David and I have something that's coming oh. out. It's done. I'm, I'm not even going there. Uh, and you can talk to me about building your coaching platform uh, at sixfigureedu.com. That is the word six, S-I-X, figureedu.com. See you guys next week. That was good.